The Acorn Electron was a budget version of the BBC Micro Educational – Home Computer made by Acorn Computers Limited. It has 32 KB of RAM, and its ROM includes BBC Basic V2 along with its operating system. The Electron was able to save and load programs onto audio cassette via a supplied converter cable that connected it to any standard tape recorder that had the correct sockets. It was capable of basic graphics, and could display onto either a television set, a color RGB monitor or a green screen monitor. For a short period, the Electron was reportedly the best-selling micro in the United Kingdom. History After Acorn Computer released the BBC Micro, executives believed that the company needed a less expensive computer for the mass market. In June 1982, co-founder Herman Hauser was asked about the recently announced £175 Sinclair ZX Spectrum's potential to hurt sales of the BBC Micro. Hausa responded that in the third quarter of that year Acorn would release a new £120-150 computer which will probably be called the Electron, with graphics superior to the Spectrums and compatibility with BBC Micro software. Acorn's Chris Curry stated that, The Electron is designed to compete with the Spectrum. The idea is to get the starting price very low, but not preclude expansion in the long term. The company reduced the number of chips in the Electron by 90% from the BBC Micro's about 100, with most functionality on a single uncommitted logic array. ULA. Problems with the ULA delayed the Electron, however, and Acorn repeatedly missed deadlines to ship the computer. Acorn formally announced the Electron at the Acorn User Exhibition in August 1983, one year after Hausa mentioned the computer, by which time its price had risen to £175 while the Spectrum cost £130. The company expected to ship the Electron before Christmas, and sell 100,000 by February 1984. Reviews were generally favorable, noting its excellent graphics compared to the Commodore 64. While its speed was acceptable compared to the Commodore and competing computers the Electron was, however, much slower than the BBC Micro. Popular Computing Weekly reported, for example, that BBC Micro games ran at less than half the speed, with very significant effects on their appeal." The reduced processor speed was attributable to the use of a 4-bit wide memory system instead of the 8-bit wide memory system of the BBC Micro to reduce cost. The Electron used just four 64 kilobits RAM devices instead of the 16 16 kilobits RAM devices deployed on the BBC Model B in the BBC Micro. The RAM ran at 2x the speed, 4 megahertz, of the CPU, 2 megahertz, allowing the video screen refresh and CPU memory access to be cleverly interleaved. On the Electron two accesses had to be made to get an 8-bit word, meaning that the CPU was unable to access its RAM while screen refresh accesses were happening. This reduced the effective CPU speed by as much as a factor of 6. At the same time the BBC Micro B Plus was being developed just meters away in the same laboratory. This model used 8 64 kilobits RAMs enabling the screen memory to be overlaid with the basic and OS ROMs in the processor memory map. This allowed the full 32K byte program RAM to be used in addition to using a 20K byte memory mapped screen. The ULA continued to cause problems, delaying large-scale manufacturing. By October 1983 Acorn had received orders for more than 150,000 units, and expected to produce 25,000 a month before Christmas, the existing backlog would take more than six months to fulfill. Demand for the Electron was high but only two of W. H. Smith's London branches had inventory. 
As the company increased production during 1984, however, the British home computer market greatly weakened, one Acorn executive later said. After Christmas 1983, they were just delivering and the company ended up with £43 million of unsaleable stock." Acorn's Christmas 1984 sales were greatly below expectations and in January 1985 the company reduced the Electron's price to £129. In conjunction with an unsuccessful expansion into the United States, by February Acorn's market capitalization declined 85% from the previous year. Olivetti acquired the company later that year and Dixon's Retail acquired the remaining Electron inventory for less than manufacturing cost, ending Acorn's home computer business. With hindsight, the machine lacked the RAM a typical program would need to fit in only around 20 KB once display memory is subtracted and processing power to take on the prevailing Spectrum and Commodore 64. Despite this, several features that would later be associated with BBC Master and Archimedes were first features of Electron expansion units, including ROM cartridge slots and the advanced disk filing system, a hierarchical improvement to the BBC's original disk filing system. While it may not have been as popular as the Spectrum, Commodore 64 or Amstrad CPC, it did sell in sufficient numbers to ensure that new software was being produced right up until the early 1990s. This meant the Electron had a lifespan not much shorter than those more popular micros and much longer than competitors such as the ORIC-1 and Dragon 32. Topic. Popular upgrades Topic. Acorn Plus One The Acorn Plus One added two ROM cartridge slots, an analog interface supporting two channels and a Centronics parallel port. The analog interface was normally used for joysticks, the parallel for a printer. The ROM slots could be booted from via the Shift plus Break key combination. The slot at the front of the interface took priority if both were populated. Access to ROM memory occurred at 2 MHz regardless of graphics mode, so theoretically, programs released on ROM could run at least twice as fast as those released on tape or disk. Despite this, all of the games released on ROM were packaged as serial ROMs from which the micro would load programs into main memory in exactly the same way as if it were loading from tape. This meant that programs did not need to be modified for their new memory location but gave no execution speed benefits. The cartridge port ROM slots provided additional control lines, compared to the lines available via the edge connector on the rear of the Electron, such as ROMSTBY, SNDIN, ROMQA, and some additional voltage sources plus 16 volts, etc. The total number of lines exposed via the cartridge port almost matched those from the 1 MHz bus of the BBC. Additional peripheral cartridge holders by companies such as PRES via their ERA, ARA2, ASR products allowed sideways ROM capability, that allowed the standard Acorn ROM space to be programmatically mapped out for alternative EPROMs, either physically via ZIF sockets, or virtually via ROM images loaded into battery backed RAM in the same ROM memory space. This enabled the Electron to achieve the same functionality as that provided by the expansion ROM slots under the keyboard and on the bottom left of the BBC Micro B keyboard. The addition of the Plus One added a number of new asterisk FX and OSBYTE calls that allowed the OS to read the values from the analog and parallel interfaces. Topic compatibility The Plus One needed memory page and D for its workspace, and some games used this space. 
To disable the plus one, after pressing break, the following commands could be issued, asterisk FX 163128, 1, and 212 equals and D6, and 213 equals and F1, and 2AC equals 0. Topic. Acorn plus 2 Per a news article on page number 9 of the October 1984 issue of Acorn User, the Acorn plus 2 interface was due to provide Econet capability. This interface did not make it to market. Topic Acorn Plus 3 The Acorn Plus 3 was a hardware module that connected independently of the Plus 1 and provided a double density 3.5 disk drive connected through a WD1770 drive controller and an ADFS ROM. There were two versions of the Plus 3 produced, a single-sided and a double-sided drive version. Because the WD1770 is capable of single density mode and uses the same IBM 360 derived floppy disk format as the Intel 8271 found in the BBC Micro, it was also possible to run a DFS filing system with an alternate ROM, such as the PRESAP4 interface. The Plus 3 reset page to an 1 d 0 reducing the amount of free RAM available to user. The ADFS system could be temporarily disabled and page reset to an e 0 via the asterisk NOADFS command. Alternative WD1770-based DFS and ADFS interfaces such as the PRESAP4 and ADFS E00 products left page at an E00, and did not require the presence of the ZYSYS HELP file See below. Discs had to be manually mounted and dismounted using the asterisk mount, asterisk dismount commands, or using the control A plus break key combination. Discs could also be booted from via the standard shift plus break key combination, if the boot file was present on the disc. This behavior was the same as on the BBC Micro. The Plus 3 included an uprated square black power supply unit with mains cord, manufactured by STC, designed and manufactured in England to BS 415 and BS 5850, that was designed to power the Plus 3, in addition to the Electron and the Plus 1 interface as well. This replaced the original cream-colored style power supply, designed to BS415 and manufactured in Hong Kong. Original, part no, unknown, input 220-240 of a volt AC, 50 Hz, output 19 volts AC, 0.737 A, 14 W, usage, electron, electron plus plus one uprated part number, 865-010, input 240 volts AC, 50 Hz 50 W, output 21 volts AC, 1.75 A, 36. 0.75 W usage electron plus plus three electron plus plus three plus plus one the original electron edge connector was repeated on the back of the plus three in addition to a secondary smaller edge connector that enabled additional drives to be connected Shugart compatible connection these required their own power supply the secondary edge connector could not power external drives. Repair note, if the internal power supply connector, used to power the existing internal 3.5 drive is damaged, and requires replacement, then the original AMP800 4-pin connector, which was already in short supply during the original production run, may be replaced with a Molex 5264-50-37-5043 Mini SPOX connector as an alternative, if using the plus 3 in screen modes 0 to 3, the pseudo variable time would be thrown off, as the interrupts were disabled during disk access in these modes. Per a news article on page 9 of the October 1984 issue of Acorn User, the Plus 3 was originally designed to have used the Intel 8272 disk controller, and not 8271, which were in short supply at the time.
Topic: <laughs> ADFS quirks. The ADFS file format used the bytes Hugo to delimit the directory names on the disk, named after ADFS author Hugo Tyson. Another quirk was the presence of the file ZYSYSHELP which was required by the system, and created during formatting. This was a kludge. Acorn's V1.0 ADFS implementation on the Electron was unreliable when writing to the first few tracks of a floppy disk, so this was a fix, and simply involved writing a file full of garbage to the suspect part. The ADFS would then skip it. Disk corruption could also occur if attempting to use the asterisk compact command without disabling the blinking cursor with the following command. VDU 23, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This was due to the fact that the asterisk compact command used screen memory by default as working space during the operation, and the software implemented blinking cursor corrupted that memory space. An alternative would be to give arguments to make it use non-screen memory for workspace, for example asterisk compact 4020 in mode 6. Tyson recalls that this bug was found during late testing but not fixed in the initial ROM release in order to avoid late changes. As workarounds exist, disk formatting was done via the asterisk eform command, versus the more familiar asterisk form 40, asterisk form 80 DFS commands. Note additionally that the asterisk eform command differs from the equivalent asterisk aform command for the 1770 ADFS on the BBC microcomputer. This is possibly as a result of needing to create the ZYSYSHELP file on the electron. The asterisk eform command was only supplied on the welcome disk that was shipped with the plus 3, and was not included in the ROM. Topic. First byte joystick interface As a games machine the Electron shared the same failing as the Sinclair Spectrum in not having a joystick port. This was quickly remedied by first byte computers who developed an interface and software which allowed a «switched» joystick to be used with the majority of software titles. This interface became very popular and was sold by W. H. Smith's, Boots, Comet and hundreds of independent computer dealers. PRES – Advanced Plus 3 The Advanced Plus 3 was very similar to the Acorn Plus 3 but packaged as an ADFS ROM cartridge for the Plus 1 with a disk drive connector at the head. This made it possible to connect a 5 and a quarter floppy disk drive as used by BBC Micro owners or a more common 3 and a half drive. Topic PRES Advanced Plus 5 AP5 provided user port all lines, 1 MHz bus and 2 bus capability, enabling second processor usage. For the PRES5, and other similar interfaces, the user port is usually implemented via a 6522 VIA chip. Slogger, Electur Turbo Board The Slogger and Electur Turbo Boards were born out of a hack initially devised at Acorn. By moving the lowest 8 KB of RAM outside of reach of the ULA, the CPU could always access it at 2 MHz. The trade-off was that the screen could not be located in that 8 KB. In practice the operating system ROMs always put the screen into the top 24 kilobytes and as a result this probably only broke compatibility with around 2% of software. 
The Slogger turboboard was a professionally fitted upgrade whereas the Elektur modification was described in an article in Dutch electronics magazine Elektur and intended for users to perform at home. Speeding up the low portion of memory is particularly useful on 6502 derived machines because that processor has a faster addressing mode for the first 256 bytes and so it is common for software to put any variables involved in time critical Critical sections of program into that region. If Acorn had thought to include this small modification in the original Electron design it is likely the machine would have had a much greater impact as it would have nearly doubled the amount of motion possible in games and saved modes 0 to 3 including the only 16 color mode from being nearly useless due to contended memory timings. Topic. Slogger Master RAM Board A development of the Turbo Board, the Master RAM Board duplicated the Turbo Board functionality and added a further option of running the micro with 32 KB of Shadow RAM in addition to the ordinary 32 KB giving 64 KB total. Some clever program counter catches meant that the ordinary system ROMs and any software using the OS calls could function without significant modification, making substantially more memory available for BASIC, VIEW, ViewSheet and almost every other business application. By providing extra storage this modification also allowed some games and applications intended for the BBC Micro to function on the Electron despite the lack of a native mode 7. Applications could not directly address video memory in this mode without modification, so it was incompatible with most games, although there is no inherent reason why a game could not be written to function in shadow mode. During its decline, master RAM boards were added to every Electron in an attempt to increase sales. <laughs> Jaffa Systems Mode 7 Display Unit Of the capabilities present in the BBC Micro but absent from the Electron, the Teletext Style Mode 7 was particularly conspicuous because of the very low memory usage in that mode just less than 1 kilobyte and the high number of BBC programs that used it. Jaffa Systems provided a number of solutions to redress this deficiency. Note, the Jaffa interface did not provide Teletext interface itself, but it did work in conjunction with specific CFAX, Teletext, Prestel adapters from other manufacturers such as Morley. The most basic solution was a pure software system supplied on a ROM cartridge that drew a low resolution approximation of the Mode 7 display in a graphics mode. Although cheap and effective in enabling use of some software that only used official ROM entry points for text output, this solution proved very slow because the Electron had to be placed into an 80-byte pitch display to be able to get anywhere near to reproducing Mode 7 and the CPU spent a lot of time drawing approximations of Mode 7 characters and graphics that in a hardware solution would be achieved without any CPU processing. It also used up 20 kilobytes of RAM for the graphics display rather than the 1 kilobyte of a hardware mode 7. Two solutions with additional hardware were provided. The first used the same graphics processor as the BBC Micro in mode 7. The SAA5050. But used software to ensure that it was fed with the correct graphics data. A software ROM would put the machine into an ordinary 40-byte pitch display. While the ULA would read the display from memory in the usual fashion, the SAA5050 would listen to the data it was reading and produce a Mode 7 interpretation of the same information. When necessary the hardware would switch between the graphics output being produced by the micro and that being produced by the add-on. The disadvantage to this system is that while the SAA5050 would expect to be repeatedly fed the same 40 bytes of data for every display scanline of each character row, the ULA would read a different set of 40 bytes for every display scanline in order to produce a full graphics display. 
A software ROM worked around this by duplicating the data intended for a Mode 7 display in memory. Although this produced a Mode 7 that barely impacted upon CPU performance and gave the same visual quality as the BBC Micro, it remained compatible only with software that used the ROM routines for outputting text and graphics and still used 10 KB of memory for the display. A second version of the hardware add-on corrected these problems. By adding a CRTC 6845 to the package, a full hardware solution was created that did not reduce CPU performance and only used 1 KB of memory for the display. A software ROM was still supplied, but this did no more than expand the hardware ROM so that it knew Mode 7 now existed and was able to switch into it. Electron second processor During the latter years, PMS produced a second processor specifically for the Electron. This provided an alternative to buying the combination of the PRES. Advanced Plus 5 and Acorn 6502 second, processor. Merlin M2105 An unusual variant of the Electron was sold by British Telecom Business Systems as the BT Merlin M2105 Communications Terminal. This consisted of a de-badged Electron plus a large expansion unit containing 32 KB of RAM, 48 KB of ROM, a Centronics printer port and a modem. The ROM firmware provided dial-up communications facilities. These were used by the Interflora Florists Network in the UK for over a decade. Technical information The hardware of the BBC Micro was emulated by a single customised ULA chip designed by Acorn in conjunction with Ferranti. It had feature limitations such as the inability to output more than one channel of sound or provide teletext mode. By contrast, the BBC Micro was capable of three-way polyphony plus one noise channel. The edge connector on the rear of the Electron exposed almost all the bus lines, but not all. The BBC Micro, courtesy of all its ports, exposed all lines. For issue 1 to 4 motherboards, the ULA had an issue similar to those experienced by other socketed CPUs. Over time, the thermal heating and cooling could cause the ULA to rise slightly out of its socket just enough to cause the machine to start exhibiting hanging or other startup failure issues, such as a continuous startup beep. This was despite a metal cover and locking bar mechanism designed to prevent this from occurring. Pushing down on the metal cover to reseat the ULA was normally sufficient to rectify these issues. Issue 5 and 6 boards utilized a different epoxy resin covering directly over the ULA, which resolved this issue. The keyboard included a form of single key keyword input, similar to that used on the Sinclair Spectrum, via the Funk key. However, unlike the Spectrum, the single keypress keyword entry was optional, and keywords could be entered manually if preferred. The ULA controlled memory access and was able to provide 32K times 8 bits of addressable RAM using 4 times 64K times 1 bit RAM chips 4164. Due to needing two accesses to each chip instead of one, and the complications of the video hardware also needing access, reading or writing RAM was much slower than on the BBC Micro. This meant that although ROM applications ran at the same speed, there was a substantial speed decrease on applications running from RAM. Hardware. CPU MOS technology 6502A clock rate variable 
CPU runs at 2 MHz when accessing ROM and 1 MHz or 0.5897 MHz depending on graphics mode when accessing RAM due to sharing memory access with the video display circuits. The electron is widely misquoted as operating at 1.79 MHz after measurements derived from speed testing against the thoroughly 2 MHz BBC Micro for various pieces of common software. Glue Logic, Ferranti Semiconductor Custom ULA RAM, 32 KB ROM, 32 KB Text modes, 20 times 32, 40 times 25, 40 times 32, 80 times 25, 80 times 32 All text output produced by software in graphics modes Graphics modes, 160 times 256 4 or 16 colors, 320 times 256 2 or 4 colors, 640 times 256 2 colors, 320 times 200 2 colors space display with two blank horizontal lines following every 8 pixel lines, 640 times 200 2 colors space display Colors, 8 colors TTL combinations of RGB primaries plus 8 flashing versions of the same colors Sound, 1 channel of sound, 7 octaves, built-in speaker. Software emulation of noise channel supported Dimensions, 16 times 34 times 6. 5 cm I.O. ports, expansion port, tape recorder connector 1200 BU cuts variation on the Kansas City standard for data encoding, via a 7-pin circular DIN connector, aerial TV connector RF modulator, composite video and RGB monitor output Power supply, external PSU, 19 volts AC Quirks. Like the BBC Micro, the Electron was constrained by limited memory resources. Of the 32 KB RAM, 3.5 KB was allocated to the OS at startup and at least 10 KB was taken up by the display buffer in contiguous display modes. Due to the timing of interrupts it was possible to disable either the top 100 or bottom 156 lines of the display with palette changes. Many games took advantage of this, gaining storage by leaving non-graphical data in the disabled area. Other games would load non-graphical data into the display, leaving it visible as regions of apparently randomly colored pixels. Although page flipping was a hardware possibility, the limited memory forced most applications to do all their drawing directly to the visible screen, often resulting in graphical flicker or visible redraw. A notable exception is Player's Joe Blades series. Topic: Tricks. Topic: FireTrack, smooth vertical scrolling. Although programs can alter the position of the screen in memory, the nonlinear format of the display means that vertical scrolling can only be done in blocks of 8 pixels without further work. FireTrack exploits a division in the way the electron handles its display. Of the seven available graphics modes, two are configured so that the final two of every ten scanlines are blank and are not based on the contents of RAM. If 16 scanlines of continuous graphical data are written to a character block aligned portion of the screen then they will appear as a continuous block in most modes but in the two non-continuous modes they will be displayed as two blocks of eight scanlines, separated in the middle by two blank scanlines. In order to keep track of its position within the display, the electron maintains an internal display address counter. The same counter is used in both the continuous and non-continuous graphics modes and switching modes mid-frame does not cause any adjustment to the counter. FireTrack switches from a non-continuous to a continuous graphics mode part way down the display. 
by using the palette to mask the top area of the display and taking care about when it changes mode it can shift the continuous graphics at the bottom of the display down in two pixel increments because the internal display counter is not incremented on blank scan lines during non-continuous graphics modes. Topic: <laughs> Exile sampled speech Exile turns the electron's one-channel output into a digital speaker for PCM output. The speaker can be programmatically switched on or off at any time but is permanently attached to a hardware counter so is normally only able to output a square wave. But if set to a frequency outside the human audible range then the ear can't perceive the square wave, only the difference between the speaker being switched on and off. This gives the effect of a simple toggle speaker similar to that seen in the 48 KB Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Exile uses this to output 1-bit audio samples. <laughs> Frac, and Zalaga, polyphonic music Aardvark Software's Frac and Zalaga as part of the copy protection, illegal copies of the games would cause a pseudo-polyphonic rendition of Trumpet Hornpipe, the Captain Pugwash theme tune, to play endlessly rather than loading the game properly Pugwash being a pirate. On the Electron version of Frack, the tune was the main theme from Benny Hill, Boots Randolph's Yakety Sax. The polyphony was achieved via fast note switching to achieve the necessary chords. Topic: Popular games. Although not as well supported by the biggest software publishers as rivals like the Commodore 64 and Sinclair ZX Spectrum, a good range of games were available for the Electron. The traditional BBC Micro publishers such as AcornSoft, Superior Software, and Micro Power offered the widest support. Notable popular games particularly associated with the Electron include Starship Command Acornsoft, 1983 Chucky Egg Aeon, 1984 Elite Acornsoft, 1984 The Repton series Superior Software, 1985 to 1989 Thrust Superior Software, 1986 Exile Superior Software 1988 There were also many popular games officially converted to the Electron from arcade machines including Crystal Castles Tempest Commando Paperboy and YIER Kung Fu or other home computer systems including Impossible Mission Jet Set Willy The Way of the Exploding Fist Tetris The Last Ninja Barbarian and SimCity Despite Acorn themselves effectively shelving the Electron in 1985, games continued to be developed and released by professional software houses until 1991. There were around 1,400 games released for the Acorn Electron, several thousand extra public domain titles were released on disc through public domain libraries. Notable enterprises which produced discs of such software are BBC PD, Electron User Group and Headfirst PD. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Emulation. Three emulators of the machine exist: Electrum for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Elculator for Windows, DOS, ELKJS as a browser-based JavaScript HTML5 emulator and the multi-system emulator MES. Electron software is predominantly archived in the UEF file format. There are also two known FPGA-based recreations of the Acorn Electron hardware. Electron FPGA for the Papilio Duo hardware and the Acorn Electron Core for the FPGA Arcade Replay board. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Design Team. 
The operating system ROM locations hexadecimal FCOO hexadecimal FDFF contain the following text, which is different from the thanks list in the original BBC Model B. Additionally, the last bytes of both the basic ROM and plus three interface ADFS V1.0 ROM include the word Roger, thought to be a reference to Roger Wilson. The case was designed by industrial designer Alan Boothroyd of Cambridge Product Design Limited. Topic. See also. Electron User, the most popular Acorn Electron-focused magazine